basic question, but how is your group looking to this point? I know we're getting close to crunch time. Yeah, I think they're working really hard. Um, you know, they're coming together as a group. I think they're playing together, playing well off of each other. Um, you know, just trying to learn our first opponent right now. We're trying to study them, make sure we know what to expect from them. How deep can the group be? Um, I might have the deepest group on the team, a lot of older guys in the room. Um, you know, we're going to find creative ways to uh, get them on the field and, and give them roles in the game. So, you know, excited to see all those guys come in and compete and, you know, show what they can do. Coach, the rules and the extended hash marks don't really help you out with defense because they just spread you out all over the field. Mm -hmm. How hard is it for that? Yeah, uh, you know, always walking from an NFL field to a college field is a lot different with the hash. Uh, you know, it, it condenses the field on one side, so it helps that side a little bit. You know, it's short, a little shorter throw for the quarterback, but it's shorter area. Um, and then obviously to the field, it can help in a way too because that's a long throw for most quarterbacks at this level. Um, you know, so you got a little bit more time to get there. So it, it kind of works both ways. It just took a little getting used to with some of the landmarks for me of coaching the guys and whatnot. Coach, the most important thing is a pass rush. Are your safeties taking those offensive defensive linemen out to lunch or anything to get them excited to get to the quarterback? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if uh, they're taking them out to lunch yet, but we definitely uh, make sure we're good friends with those guys. and. You know, make sure that we tell them every time they did a good job. And we got some special ones in this group, so I'm excited to see them rush the passer. When you were a baseball player here, did you ever imagine a decade later you'd be coaching football here? Um, I think my first love was always football. Um, coming out of high school, I was a better baseball player. And I was such a bad baseball player in college, and I'm a football coach. So, uh, <laughs> But no, I, um, you know, back then on, in the off season on Fridays, we'd do a little seven on seven kind of as conditioning in baseball. So obviously that was a highlight of my, my day or my week. Uh, and actually kind of a story I've tell, tell people sometimes is when I first got done playing baseball here, me and Danny Propel were roommates. He played on the football team. And, uh, you know, he set it up with Wally Burnham where we had to actually had to go sit down and, you know, learn some football from him. And thinking back, you know, like, you know, old school coach like that that's big time, letting a baseball coach come in or a baseball player come in and talk football with him was pretty cool looking back at it. Who was instrumental in helping you transition from baseball to get into football coaching? Uh, my little brother. Um, so he played football at Rutgers. Okay. Um, he's four years behind me. He was playing for Shiano right around the same time uh, I got into coaching, coaching high school football. Okay. Actually, his senior year was when I first started coaching. And then he went on to college. And kind of my transition from coaching offense when I coached high school to defense was really a lot of him and him playing defensive back at Rutgers. And, Learned a lot of things from him. He's a DB coach at University of Houston now. Okay, yeah. and then of course when you were in baseball, you were with Eddie Carrieri. I was for, uh, Eddie for two, two. Yeah. Eddie for two, and then uh, Lalo for one. How about that? And then yep. you come back, and Lalo's still here. Yes, he is. Yep, yep. <laughs> yep. What was your thinking in uh, transferring from the NFL to back to your alma mater? Um, kind of always wanted to be back here. Um, I just felt like the timing was finally right. Um, you know, my parents are getting close to retirement. My mom just retired from teaching at high school. My dad's close uh, to retirement. So, you know, back closer to the family. And, um, you know, I just know what this place can be and I'm excited to be a part of it. It seems like the thought is that in the pros, you're not doing as much teaching as you are in college. Is that true? What's the biggest, uh, biggest difference? No, I, I, no I, I think it's about the same teaching. Uh, it's a complex game. Uh, I think at this level, you get the help a young man come into college and grow into, you know, a full grown man with, you know, a mature mindset. Whereas in the NFL, you know, I've coached some guys that are older than me, families, you know, one guy's a preacher. So, you know, it's a different environment. So you never played football for yourself? Is that no, right? not, not a snap. Yeah. Played high school football. Yeah, yeah. but you, I mean, there was never an opportunity to walk on or whatever. I want good enough to play baseball. I want good enough to play with those guys. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you just you just had the yeah the football Jones yeah. mentality, yeah. right? That was yeah. your sport. Yeah. yeah. Coach, my wife and I were both teachers and she retired before I did, but she told me you're not retiring because you're not gonna hang around this house twenty four seven. Did Mama tell Dad the same thing? Yeah, my mom my mom's a uh you know, she's out and about. She goes and experiences <laughs> life. My dad's a kind of more of a homebody. But she's starting to, you know, get him used to uh, what he'll need to be when he retires. So. You got to train him. Yeah, no doubt. How often do you tell NFL stories to these guys, and, and does that is that a way to get their attention? 
to know that, hey, I, when I coach mm-hmm. this guy or when I play at this stadium, I mean, do they, yeah. they respond to that? Um, usually a story is not about the, you know, the lights, camera, and action. It's more about the, you know, the, the way some of the guys prepare, you know, the way some of the guys are great teammates. Um, you know, in the NFL on Friday nights or Thursday nights, guys will have the rest of their teammates over at their house and they'll watch film together and they'll have a chef and all that, you know, so taking that next step of preparation and really working hard at being great at the game. That's, that's the thing that I share. Do they see you as a guy that can give them a path to the league? I hope so. You, you can tell some, some things that are relevant Yeah, to I hope so. Um, you know, I've seen the whole process So, you know, from interviewing guys at the combine to working guys out at a pro day to, you know, deciding, helping the GM and the coaches decide, you know, who we're going to draft, who we're going to cut, all those things. So I've seen the ins and outs of that league and you know hopefully just can, can provide them information and help them make good decisions and prepare them for what that life would be like. You kept up with any of your teammates that you played with here at USF? Okay. Yeah so uh, Dexter Butler was my roommate he, he's the head basketball coach at Key West High right now. Um, Daryl Lewis was another roommate of mine uh, he's down at Key West he's actually got a music career going down there. Uh, Mike Consomagno he lives up in the uh, Staten Island area he usually makes it down for a game um, Coach Cartier's sons played with us as well. Um, haven't been able to really get back and see as much of them since I've been, as I wanted to. Obviously, we've been very busy, sure. but looking forward to seeing those guys at games and um, hang out with them as much as I can. Probably. What might be among your top couple memories as a player here at USA? Whatever it may have been. Yeah. Well, I was in the stands for you know when we beat uh, Louisville. I think that was 05 when they ranked pretty high. Um, I remember watching when Jesse Hester scored a touchdown against Auburn to win the game. Um, you know, and then just for myself in baseball, you know, we we had a series where we, or uh, one of the years, I think we beat Florida two out of two. And they ended up playing national championship that year. Um, you know, obviously I didn't have that good of a playing career, so I'm not allowed to play them, but, you know, I had some awesome teammates that did some big time things. I had some guys play in the major leagues, so, you know, got to play against a lot of major leaguers. I remember pitching against Ryan Braun and some other players like that, so. You mentioned so, the meetings with Wally Byrne. Was mm-hmm. that just a couple times? Or did you guys that was just one time. Okay. But I was just, you know, looking back at it, like, okay. man, like I, I don't know what I would have did if, like, a soccer player came in to talk football with me right now. I don't know if I'd have time. <laughs> <laughs> but he found time for me. You know? Gotcha. Take a touch now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're just, you know, breaking it down. And yeah, that that kind of thing. Coach talk and with him. Yeah. Oh uh, no, he was really like a foundation of like, all right, this is an over front, this is an under front. Yeah, I like, like yeah, like, like foundation like football. like coaching mentor kind of stuff. Where yeah, explaining yeah. stuff and drawing yeah. it up. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, Which is pretty cool. And what do you think about you know being a defensive coach and you know obviously the NFL quarterback put up these incredible numbers and mm-hmm. in, in college. I mean, it's like just. You yeah. know, if you stop, if you get two stops in a game, that's a heck of, a, a heck of an effort. I mean, yeah. what, you know, what you have to defend now and yeah. how, how, how kind of the perception has changed of what's yeah. a good defensive game and what's, what's not. Yeah, I'm happy you got some respect for what we go through. Yeah, uh, you guys we're, under assault, yeah, right? yeah, we're facing a good quarterback, this first one for sure. And, um, you know, it's, it's tough. You know, it's a, um, offenses do a great job of spreading the field out. You know, obviously they go fast. You know, there's really dynamic players out there that they can get the ball to in open space that can make plays. So, you know, it's a tough game. It's tough to defend some of that stuff. Um, but we enjoy the we enjoy that that competitiveness and we enjoy that you know that um, essentially trying to gain an advantage for our players at the end of the day. So that's what we love about coach. What, it, what you know, you're the defensive pass game coordinator, yeah. and safeties coach. So you obviously you guys study these quarterbacks. What what is it about this first guy that? Catches your eye, uh, Reed uh, um, Western. I feel like he always knows where to go with the ball. You know, he's a really good decision maker. Uh, he's accurate. You know, he's got a good arm strength. So he's, he's got a good package, total package kind of. Reminds me of the guy they had before that's at the Patriots. We actually played him uh, last year in New England. So they remind me of each other a lot. Not a three step drop and get it out fast? He does a little bit of everything. He can mm-hmm. do it all. So that's why I like him. That's why I like about him.